Wi-Fi testing is highly recommended. However, it is likely that you're not going to have every single Android device with all the different screen resolutions and hardware configurations. To solve this, you need to use Android emulation. The first thing we must do is install the Android SDK. Visit developer.android.com backslash SDK, then click installing the SDK link, and then click standalone SDK tools. Next click download the SDK now link and select the Linux TGZ file and wait until the download is complete. Once the download has completed, view the directory where you downloaded the TGZ file. Then right click on it and tell it to extract. Once extracted, rename the file to android-sdk and move it to your home directory. Before we begin installing additional programs, we must solve some permission issues with the temp directory in our home folder. We can see there's a lock icon over this directory, which means only administrators can write to this directory. This causes major problems for when a node package wants to download temporary files. To solve this problem, open the terminal and type sudo chown and then your username and then the directory to where your temp file is located. Then a hyphen with a capital R and a lowercase v. This will require your password and once complete, we can now see there is no lock icon over the temp directory. Now we need to install additional programs that the Android SDK and Cordova programs depend on. First, we'll install the Java Runtime Environment, or JRE for short. To do this, type sudo apt-get install openjdk-7-jre. It will ask if you want to continue, so please type Y and hit return. This installation will take several minutes. Next, we need to install the Java Development Kit, or JDK for short. Again, type sudo apt-get install openjdk-7-jdk. This again will require acceptance during the installation process and take several minutes. This next command is only for 64-bit GNU installations. If you're not running a 64-bit installation, then you won't need to type the next command. If, however, you do have a 64-bit installation, like I do, please type the following command. sudo apt-get install lib32 stdc++6, then lib32z1, then lib32z1-dev. After that, we need to edit our profile so that the terminal can find the Android SDK upon request. We're going to edit this file in gedit, so type gedit, then the tilde symbol, backslash, dot profile. Once the file is open, you need to add some environment variables. Please note, I've provided all this content in the second lecture, so you don't have to type this out all by yourself. I've created two variables, one called Android Home and the other Android Platform Tools. Android Home is pointing to where my Android SDK is found. Then the variable Android Platform Tools is pointing to the Platform Tools directory within the Android SDK directory. You need to change the username, Lawrence, to your username. Finally, the last line exports these paths so the terminal is aware of the relevant Android SDK programs. Save and exit the file, and then reload your profile by typing dot space dot profile. Next, type Android, and if everything was successful, you should now see the Android SDK Manager open. The Android SDK Manager allows us to install software development kits, or SDKs, 
for the different Android operating systems. First, make sure you have the Android SDK platform and build tools selected for installation if they are not already installed. Now as long as you have your build tools and platform tools installed, I'd also like to install Android Lollipop, which is Android 5.1.1 and is recommended for Cordova, otherwise you'll get an error during the build process. Now the reason why the SDK manager doesn't download every single package that's available is because a lot of the older Android platforms are obsolete and are no longer being supported by Google. So there's pretty much no need to download those SDKs. On top of that, it takes up a lot of hard drive space and you only really need to install the packages that you want for your testing. Apart from the build tools and platform tools there to do with the actual build process that creates your application. Now you can download all packages to do with this operating system. However, you can pick and choose. So I'm going to choose again the SDK, that's the software development kit, that's the main gubbings of it. And I'm also going to strip out all of the documentation, forget all about that stuff, and I'm going to download the system images to do with this OS. So what are system images? Well, you have the ARM architecture and you have the Intel Atom architecture, and potentially a few others. But what it's really doing is it's mapping hardware. So if you were to think about your device, it more than likely has an ARM processor inside, which is a very, very popular processor because it saves on power. But also you could have, let's say, an Intel processor in there or something of another kind. However, ARM and Intel are the most popular, with ARM being the most popular. And what the system image allows you to do is map that hardware architecture in let's say your emulator so that you can test that your application works on a device that has an ARM processor. And likewise the same for an Intel processor and other processors. Now it's not necessarily required, in most cases your application will be able to run on both architectures no problem because you're creating a hybrid application, but there can be some plugins that are very specific, which we'll talk about later. However, that's what the system images are, they just allow you to map out hardware configurations and instruction sets that are for certain processors. So after selecting the packages that I want for testing environments and the build process, I can then go ahead and say install these packages. A window will pop up and you need to accept all of the licenses that are there. So you can go ahead and click on it and say accept license for all those different licenses. And then you can go ahead and say install. Once we have our SDK downloaded, it's time to create an Android virtual device or AVD for short. You can either type Android AVD to go directly to the AVD manager, but I already have the Android SDK open. So I'll just drop down the tools menu and click on manage AVDs. Once the AVD manager is open, we can now create a new AVD from scratch or choose from some predefined definitions of the more popular Android devices out there. I'll create an AVD from the Nexus 5 definition and slightly customize it to my needs. First we have the AVD name which cannot contain spaces or special characters. This name is very important as we can use it in the terminal to target this specific emulator. I'll just call it Nexus underscore 5. Then we have a list of devices with different screen resolutions. Next we have the target which is the OS that will be emulated. In my case I'll emulate the Android Lollipop OS. We can also choose to emulate a CPU slash ABI. It's advisable if you have an Intel processor in your computer to emulate an Intel Atom processor on your AVD. But in my case, I'll choose the popular ARM processor found in many devices today. Next, we have the ability to say whether our emulated device has a hardware keyboard. If so, the virtual keyboard will be disabled. I want the virtual keyboard, so I'll uncheck this checkbox. Then we have a choice of skins to choose from. 
You can have a skin with dynamic controls, no skin at all, or other various skins that give a device-like appearance. Next, you can emulate or use a webcam connected to your computer for the front and rear cameras on the AVD device. Next, I can allocate how much RAM or random access memory my AVD device can have, so that'll be 2048 megabytes. Then I can define the VM heap size. This allows me to allocate memory to single applications. So any application that you run on your AVD will be allowed up to 64 megabytes of random access memory. And then if it goes over that, it will get a quota error. Also, we can emulate the internal storage and additional storage, such as an SD card. Finally, we have some emulation options. You can either have snapshot or use host GPU to speed up the emulator. Note they cannot be selected both at the same time. Once we've set all the options, click OK and the AVD will be created. Next, we can select our newly created AVD and then click Start to launch and test our emulator. We can also choose to scale down the display if it's too large for our computer's screen. So I'll check Scale Display to Real Size. This process takes a long time depending on your circumstances. You will need a fairly powerful computer if you want to use Android emulation in any professional capacity for testing your apps. Once the emulator is fully loaded, we now know it works. Exit out of the emulator, AVD manager, and the Android SDK manager. Let's now install Cordova, create an Android project for our app, and then compile the project to the emulator. Now the reason why you're installing Cordova is because even the PhoneGap program will use Cordova to build your application locally. First, to install Cordova, type in sudo npm install hyphen g Cordova. After that, cd into your apps directory and then type Cordova platform add Android. If we review our app's platforms directory, we can now see there is an Android folder with an Android project ready to be compiled and run. Also, please note that this project is still not ready to be compiled to the Android emulator, and that's due to the fact that the minimum SDK preference is not set up correctly by default. It needs to be a higher minimum SDK version in order for you to not receive an error. So please open up your app's root directory, and in there you'll see the config.xml file. If you open that up in your favorite editor, and then take a look at the minimum SDK preference, and you want to set that to at least 14. To run this project on the emulator, go back to the terminal, make sure the terminal's still focused on our apps directory, and then type Cordova run Android. This process will take several minutes and eventually your app will open in the emulator automatically. Finally, to finish off this lecture, I will once again launch the AVD manager by typing into the terminal Android AVD. Then under definitions, I will create a new AVD from the Nexus 6 definition. After going through the options, I'll quickly create the AVD. Now I want to show you how to target this specific emulator. Take a note of the AVD name, as this is very important. Close the AVD manager. Make sure the terminal is focused on our apps directory, and then type Cordova run Android hyphen hyphen target equals, and then in quotation marks, type the name of the AVD exactly as noted before. So in my case, it's Nexus underscore six. You'll notice my Nexus 6 emulator is now being targeted and not the default Nexus 5 emulator. Again, the boot process is very slow depending on your computer. So we have now successfully emulated Android on GNU.